Hallo Schüler, hallo Schülerinnen. Willkommen in der Grammatikstube. Simona, today we're going to be talking about dependent clauses. Dependent clauses? Dependent huh. clauses. What's that? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a review of dependent clauses. Okay, first, Simona, let's look at some examples of some dependent clauses that might help. First, in English. I'll, re I'll, uh, I'll put the uh, dependent clause up and you read it for me. All right. When they saw the witch. And here's another one. Because he was in the forest. Okay, so one reason why we call this a de dependent clause is that it can't stand by itself. It's dependent on something else. So if you were to say one of these by itself, when they saw the witch, it wouldn't work, would it? Mm -hmm. It's dependent on something else. So let's uh, look at the, Eng uh, the German for each of these. For that first one. Als sie die Hexe sahen. Okay, and the second one, the German for that would be? Weil er im Wald war. Right, and just like in English, those German dependent uh, clauses can't stand by themselves. They can't e exist independently. Um, both of those sentences have something, or those clauses, rather, have something at the beginning, and you can see they are what? Ah, okay, subordinating conjunctions. Right, they start off with subordinating conjunctions, and uh, we actually call those something else, or we refer to them as something else at some times. Huh. Those are referred to as verb kickers, right? Right, because what do you think they do? Well, if you look at the English verb in, this, in the clause, the verb comes after the subject. In German, in both of these, the verb goes to the end. To the end. So those conjunctions make the verb go to the end, and that's pretty much a, a standard uh, feature of a dependent clause. Okay, so if a dependent clause cannot stand alone, that must mean the main clause can? The main clause can. Let's look at some examples of a main clause in German. Main clauses. I'm going to give you couple examples in English again. They ran away. He was afraid. Now, Simona, could you say these sentences by themselves? Would they make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so these can stand alone. They're not dependent. They're independent. Let's look at the German for each of these. Sie rannten weg. Gut. Er hatte Angst. Okay. Now, those are uh, independent clauses or main clauses, and there's one main rule or big rule for main clauses, and that's about the verb. Do you remember that? About the position of the verb? Right. Where is yeah. the verb in a main clause? The verb will always be in second position there. Very good. So we see here that they're the second word in each sentence, second position, and there's the rule. The verb is always in second position in a main clause. That's very important for what we're talking about today. Okay. So today we're talking about starting a sentence with the dependent clause. Could you start off by talking a little bit about how to start the sentence with the main clause? Sure. Let's have a look. Okay, so if you have the main clause first, that's really very easy. Uh, we've already seen that these are, that's a main clause, the Rantenbeck. And let's look at a dependent clause. Okay, so als sie die Hexe sahen. We can see that's a dependent clause, the uh, verbs kicked to the end by the verb kicker. Now we want to put these together, and it's really very easy. Okay, so first we write the first part down there, sie rannten weg. We're going to add something here, Simone. See that? Ah. A comma. The comma is very important. You always have to have a comma between clauses in German. That's um, an important rule, one that doesn't exist in English, but we have to have it in German. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to put the dependent clause there, and look at this. Okay, so... Go ahead and read that whole sentence for me, Simone. 
Sie rannten weg, als sie die Hexe sahen. Right, so basically the main clause first and then dependent after that, it's very easy to put those two together with a comma. Okay, but when we switch the two and the dependent clause comes first. Ah, that's where it gets interesting. Let's look and see how that works. Okay. When the dependent clause comes first, let's put the de dependent clause up there, one that we saw before, als sie die Hexe sahen, and then our main clause, you read that for me. Sie rannten weg. Right. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to just put them down the way that they read there. Let's go ahead and put the, uh, the als part up, the dependent clause down. Als sie die Hexe sahen. Now, we are going to need something right after that. What do you see there? Oh, a comma again. A comma again. So the comma is an important feature of putting clauses together. Remember the rule, basically. It's necessary between clauses. A clause usually has a subject and a verb in it, and if you put it together with another subject-verb combination, you need a comma. Now, the question now is, though, Simona, we've got our dependent clause. This actually is counted as the first thing of the main clause, the first element. So what do you think is going to follow this comma? Do you want to make a, a guess here, just shot in the dark? Okay, so the verb always needs to be in the second position, right? So would we start with the verb? You are right. That verb is coming down there right after the comma. Alzi die Hexe an Ranten. Now, what's going to be the rest of the sentence, uh, Simona? Hmm. Ranten sie weg. Ranten sie weg. So, after you've got the verb there, you just put the rest of the sentence there, whatever it may be. The uh, subject's going to follow the verb. So, you can see that we've got, we've changed the word order. Um, so, let's look back at the sentence again so you can see exactly what's going on with the order of the different elements of the sentence, okay? Okay. All right. So... We're going to take everything else away. We've got that sentence. What's the first element of this sentence right there? That is the dependent clause, and that is the first element of the sentence. Now, this entire sentence, we look at it as being one main clause now. So what's got to be second, according to the rule? The verb. The verb is second, right. And if we re remember that, that the entire clause together is a main clause, or the entire new sentence together is a main clause, then we're going to be in good shape. And then whatever is left of the sentence, the subject first will follow, and that's going to be third. So that's the word order we have. Okay, Herr Kahn, I think I understand how it works, but why would I want to start a sentence with a dependent clause? Well, it just makes your um, language more interesting if you uh, start with a different word order, uh, vary the word order a, bu a bit. It can also give your thoughts more flow if you start with a dependent clause. It might uh, make it more logical. So I re really recommend that uh, students try to integrate more and more dependent uh, clauses first in their sentences and see, uh, see if they can practice that and get better at uh, their, their uh, writing. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks, Simona. And now we're going to go to the Aufgabe. Aufgabe. Okay, for this you need to write sentences, Sätze schreiben, create a single sentence for each by placing the conjunction in the parentheses at the beginning of the new sentence. Here we go. Eins, zwei und drei. So, Simona, I want to ask you a question. Uh, students are going to begin all of these sentences with what's in the parentheses. What's going to go in the middle of each of these sentences that we want to remind students of? Ah, a comma? A comma, that's right. So, think of that, students, as you're writing these sentences. Make sure you have a comma in your sentence. And think of word order in the final sentence, the uh, verb will be the second in the second position. Okay.